Hi guys, welcome to this Tuesday night when we're going to be getting into Goddard. This is the second in a four-part series in which we are diving Neville Goddard's book called Feeling is the Secret. This is a classic book, absolutely one of my favorites, and it teaches us the mechanics or the essentials of manifestation, but not just so that we can acquire things, obtain things, but rather so that we can live in our highest frequency as the creators that we truly are, and so that we can tap into our divine nature and demonstrate to ourselves and through ourselves everything that we are and everything that we can do. Manifestation is not just about money. Manifestation is not just about material things. In fact, it's hardly about that. It's about you being powerful in your life and doing the things that you came here to do. In order to do any of that, though, in order to start manifesting, you have to believe that you truly are in the power position of your life. That's so important. If you don't believe that you can, you won't have it. And believing and being are one. What does this mean? This means we can believe something, but if we're not also being it, meaning if we're not also vibrating to the belief of that and occupying the frequency of that, we truly don't believe it. We believe what we are. We vibrate according to who we feel that we are. Believing and being are one. And so this book gets us all the way together about how powerful we are the triune nature of consciousness and what we can create. And it also goes to great lengths to tell us that it's virtually none of our business how it works, how the universe does what the universe knows how to do. Neville just tells us, don't concern yourself with such things. Just what do you want to dream about? What sort of destiny do you want to create for yourself and for your loved ones? What kind of relationships do you want to have? What do you want to do with your life? Where's the dreamer inside of you? Neville is asking us to be concerned with how we're dreaming and thinking and how we are feeling, and the universe takes care of the rest. To recap very quickly, last week we learned about the law and its operations. The law is essentially the nature or the mechanics of the triune human. We here now, we are a consciousness. But the consciousness has three aspects. The first aspect, as we discussed last week, is the conscious. This is the male aspect of who it is that we are. This is Rodin's The Thinker. This is that dreaming aspect as we are saying our affirmations, as we are contemplating on what we desire and what we want to create. That is coming from this male aspect, the conscious. And then the second aspect is the female aspect, which is the subconscious. And Neville so beautifully described the subconscious as the wife and the lover who rises to meet the desire of the thinker, of the husband. And she never questions the husband. Do you remember that? She never says, hey, are you sure that's a good idea? <laughs> or hey, are you sure the feeling that you have is the right feeling to create what you want? No, the subconscious just rises to the husband like a lover and receives the husband and sets about giving birth to a creation in the husband's and the wife's image and likeness. That's what our subconscious does. It is truly the womb of creation. It is truly our creator essence. Each and every one of us has this beautiful universal machine working inside of us at all times. But she only responds to the last aspect of the consciousness, which is feeling. Feeling. We can call this the frequency. I was just talking about belief and being, being one. How you vibrate is how you create. And if you're vibrating in joy, well, then you are creating joyful, outpictured, objective reality. The frequency or the feeling is the last aspect, and it's probably the most important, which is why Goddard said feeling is the secret. And so we talked about all of that last week. And if you haven't seen that teaching, I recommend that you go back, you check it out. Further, I totally recommend that you get the work of Neville Goddard. He has been passed for, I want to say, 40 years, maybe longer. But his estate lives on. His books live on. 
You can get Feeling is the Secret on Audible for a few bucks. You can get Neville Goddard's The Complete Reader right off of Amazon, and it contains, I don't know, about 10 of his most famous books. You can go up on YouTube as well, and you can hear him give his speeches, but support Goddard, support this work, because it's transformational. All right, when we left off last week, he was telling us about how, how all this operation works, but also how important sleep actually is and how sleep is the domain of the subconscious, the wife, when she's creating, when she's gestating, when she's giving birth. This is all happening on the subconscious level and when we fall asleep and dream, that's the playground of the subconscious. So are you ready? Shall we dive in? Chapter two of Feeling is the Secret, entitled Sleep. Lean in, everybody. Sleep, the life that occupies one-third of our stay on Earth, is the natural doorway into the subconscious, the womb of creation. So it is with sleep that we are now concerned. The conscious two-thirds of our life on Earth is measured by the degree of attention we give our sleep. Did you catch that? The conscious two-thirds of our waking life is measured by how much attention we give our sleep. Our understanding of and delight in what sleep has to bestow will cause us night after night to set out for it as though we were keeping an appointment with a lover. Quote, In a dream, a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumbering upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. While men and women sleep, then the Creator opens the ears and the perception of people and seals the instruction. The instruction is the impression of the conscious and the feeling on the subconscious. She's received her instructions from you. She's taken all the vibrations and all the feelings and all the thoughts, and now she's taking it into her playground to create it. That was Job 33 of the Bible. It is in sleep and in prayer, Neville says, a state prayer being a state akin to sleep, that man enters the subconscious to make his impressions and receive his instructions. In these states, the conscious and subconscious are creatively joined. The male and the female become one flesh. Sleep is the time when the male or the conscious mind, the thinker, turns from the world of sense to seek its lover or its subconscious self. Now when Neville says that the male aspect or the conscious thinking aspect turns from the world of sense, what he means is it turns from 3D reality. The walls fall away, all the narratives, all the worries, all the anxieties, and all the reality that third dimensional reality shows us, the reality of our relationships, the reality of our bank account, the reality of our wellness or lack thereof. It's during sleep that the conscious mind turns away from that and instead goes into this union with the subconscious. The subconscious Unlike the woman of the world who marries her husband to change him, has no desire to change the conscious or the waking state, but loves it as it is and faithfully reproduces its likeness in the outer world of form. The conditions and events of your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. We got to read that again. It's so powerful. The conditions and events of your life, everything you're experiencing now in your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. Again, the subconscious being the womb of creation. At night, she creates for you what you experience in the next day. These are your children. What kind of children are you bringing into your world? They are made in the image and in the likeness of your innermost feeling that they may reveal you to yourself. <sighs> that gives me goosebumps. Your children, your life, your conditions as you see them to be, these are made in the image and the likeness of your innermost feeling about yourself. 
that they may reveal you to yourself. How powerful is that? If what you're experiencing in your life right now is unpleasant, is dissonant, is confrontational, is unwell, is chaotic, this is revealing to you something about you that you need to pay attention to. These are your children brought into form because the subconscious creator universal aspect did as you asked through your feeling and your thought. You see, you're responsible for what you are experiencing today and you're responsible for what you experience tomorrow. Quote, as in heaven, so on earth. In other words, as in the subconscious, so on the earth. As in the subconscious, so in your world. As in the subconscious, so in your bank account. As in your subconscious, so it is in your body. Whatever you have in consciousness as you go to sleep, is the measure of your expression in the waking two-thirds of your life on earth. Whatever you have in your consciousness, and what this really means is whatever you're holding in your frequency right before you go to sleep, outpictures itself in the two-thirds remaining of your waking life every single time. And here we're going to start getting into priming of sleep. Nothing stops you from realizing your objective except for your failure to feel that you are already that which you wish to be or that you are already in possession of the thing that you seek. Your subconscious gives form to your desires only when you feel your wish fulfilled. Let me repeat that because it's powerful. Take a deep breath and let's integrate this. Nothing stops you from realizing your objective, what it is that you want, except your failure to feel that you are already that that you wish to be, or that you are already in possession of the thing that you seek. You already have it. You already are that. And the only reason you don't have it is because you don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't vibrate to it, you see. Your subconscious gives form to your desires only when you feel your wish has already been fulfilled. The unconsciousness of sleep is the normal state of the subconscious. I call it the playground. Goddard calls it the normal state. Because all things come from within yourself, and your conception of yourself determines that which comes, you should always feel the wish fulfilled before you drop off to sleep. You never draw out of the deep of yourself that which you want. You always draw out that which you are. And you are that which you feel yourself to be, as well as that which you feel as true of others. This again speaks to all of us who are running these affirmations or these vision boards of all the things we want to create and all the things we want to be. But are we feeling that? We only draw forth that which we are, not what we want to be. Because that which we are is how we vibrate. That's our frequency. We've got to change that in order to get whatever's on our vision board. We have to change that in order to change what's being outpictured to us. To be realized then, the wish must be resolved into the feeling of being or having or witnessing the state sought. This is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized? How would I feel if I were 25 pounds less? Oh, God, probably feel very energized. I'd probably feel pretty foxy. I'd probably go out shopping. I'd probably have a lot of fun. And here it comes, the vibration of feeling that I'm 25 pounds less. If I can live today, like I'm 25 pounds less. In the joy of that, in the wellness of that, I will soon find myself to be 25 pounds less. Ask yourself, what feeling comes when you ask your question, how would I feel if my wish were fulfilled? This is the feeling which should monopolize and immobilize your attention as you fall asleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Now, as an aside, I talk often about the hypnagogic state, do I not? The hypnagogic state is that state of interbetween. When we are not quite awake, but we're not fully asleep, we experience hypnagogia 
twice, at least twice a day. In the morning, when we're rousing, we're kind of drowsy, we're still in that trance. And also at night, when we're going to sleep, as we are falling asleep, these two times of day are extremely powerful. They're, extra they're extremely powerful if you want to be more intuitive. They're extremely powerful if you want to be more psychic, but they are also extremely productive and extremely creative if you want to manifest something because your walls have fallen down. All the trappings of 3D start to fall away or slough off as you start to fall asleep and enter the domain of the subconscious dancer, the creator of your life. And so the trick here with hypnagogia is when you find yourself in that trance-like state, don't let yourself fall asleep or don't let yourself wake up fully. Instead, play around there. Start visualizing, envisioning that which you wish to be. The wish fulfilled. What is that for you? Make a picture of that. Start running a scenario around that. And while you're doing that in the hypnagogic state, this heavily tranced out deeply subconscious state, also, to the best of your ability, conjure a complementary feeling, meaning a feeling that describes, supplements, complements what you are envisioning. If you can do that without rousing yourself, because quite honestly, if I start feeling like I've just won the lottery, I start getting really excited and that might wake me up. So it's kind of a dance you do before you fall asleep or before you wake up. Having the picture in your mind or having the intention be very firm and solid, but also having a vibration around that that doesn't excite you too much to wake you up. That's where you have to play and that's where you can create. And that is truly a magical time. Anybody who wants to be more spiritually connected, anybody who wants to prime themselves, instruct themselves, needs to be working in the hypnagogic state. Back to Goddard. Once asleep, man has no freedom of choice. The thinking man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of himself. Did you know that? His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of himself. It follows, therefore, that he should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before he retires to sleep. Quote, Come before me with singing and thanksgiving. End quote. Quote, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. What Neville's saying here is enter into sleep with praise and thanksgiving, with joy, the frequency of love and joy. Enter through his gates and to enter into the subconscious, the subconscious's chambers with this joyful feeling and she will create from that feeling. Neville says, your mood prior to sleep defines your state of consciousness as you enter into the presence of your everlasting lover, the subconscious. She sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. She sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. How many of you have lovers and friends and children and they may put on a brave face, but we see them exactly as they feel themselves to be. We know what they're going through. We sense it and we sense it as the truth. It's the same with the subconscious. Whatever you take into sleep, she feels, she sees exactly as you feel yourself to be. If, as you prepare for sleep, you assume and maintain the consciousness of success by feeling, I am successful, then you must be successful. She has to outpicture this. Lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. Feel as you would were you in possession of your wish and quietly relax into unconsciousness. Quote, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Nevertheless, quote, he giveth his beloved sleep. The subconscious never sleeps. Sleep is the door through which the conscious, the waking mind, the male aspect passes to be creatively joined to the subconscious. Sleep conceals the creative act while the objective world reveals it. In sleep, man impresses the subconscious with his conception of 
himself. What more beautiful description of this romance of the conscious and the subconscious is there than that told in the Song of Solomon, quote, By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him, and I did not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house, and into the chamber of her that conceived me." End quote. Preparing to sleep, you feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, and then you relax into unconsciousness. I am successful. I am successful. And you say this and feel this as you relax into unconsciousness or fall asleep. Your realized wish is he whom you seek. By night on your bed, you seek the feeling of the wish fulfilled, that you may take it with you into the chamber of her that conceived you, into sleep or the subconscious which gives you form, that this wish also may be given form. This is the way to discover and conduct your wishes into the subconscious. Feel yourself in the state of the realized wish and quietly drop off to sleep. Night after night, you should assume the feeling of being, having, and witnessing that which you seek to be. Possess and also see manifested. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. Your subconscious, whose natural state is sleep, sees you as you believe yourself to be. And whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, the subconscious will faithfully embody or create your belief, bringing it into form, bringing it into your reality. Everything is just you pushed out. As you feel, so do you impress her. As you feel, so do you impress her. And she... The perfect lover gives form to these impressions and outpictures them as the children of her beloved. Everything you experience in your reality, these are the children of your creation. These are the children of the union of that which you think and that which you feel being transmitted to the universal subconscious. These are your begotten. And if you want to change the landscape of this, well, you have to change how you're vibrating within. Thou art all fair my love. There is no spot in thee. This is the attitude of, of mind to adopt before dropping off to sleep. Disregard appearances and feel that things are as you wish them to be. For, quote, he calleth things that are not seen as though they were, and the unseen becomes seen. This is Romans 4.17. The Creator calls things that are not seen as though they are. It speaks into creation, things that have not been created, but it interacts with these things as though they have been created, and this is how they are created. It's the same in our life. We call things into being that are not seen, and we speak to them as though they are. We can call this faking it until we make it, but what I'm saying is I'm going to talk to my vision. I'm going to interact with my vision. I'm going to vibrate in alignment with my vision. That's how I call the unseen into being. That's how creators do it. Quote, again, he calleth things that are not seen as though they were, and the unseen becomes seen. What are you calling into being? To assume the feeling of satisfaction is to call conditions into being which will mirror this satisfaction. Quote, signs follow, they do not precede. Proof that you are will follow the consciousness that you are. Again, proof that you are will follow the consciousness that you are. It will not precede it. You are an eternal dreamer, dreaming non-eternal dreams. Your dreams take form as you assume the feeling of their reality. Don't limit yourself to the past, amen. Don't limit yourself to the past. Knowing that nothing is impossible to consciousness, begin to imagine states beyond the experiences of your past. If you can see it, if you can feel it, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Knowing that nothing is impossible to consciousness, nothing is impossible to you, begin to imagine states beyond the experience of the past. Whatever the mind of man 
and woman can imagine, man and woman can realize. All visible states were first invisible states, and you called them into visibility by assuming the feeling of their reality. You did that. The creative process is first imagining and then believing the state imagined. Always imagine, therefore, and expect the best. Let's say that again. It's important. The creative process is first imagining, thinking, dreaming, conscious, and then believing vibration, frequency, feeling, the state imagined. Always imagine and expect the very best for yourself. The world cannot change until you change your conception of the world. Everything is just you pushed out. If you don't like what you see, if you don't like what you experience, change yourself, change your frequency, change your interior world, change your perception. Quote, as within, so without. Nations as well as people are only what you believe them to be. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that they are? Who do you say that that group is? Nations, as well as people, are only what you believe them to be. No matter what the problem is, no matter where the problem is, no matter whom it concerns, you have no one to change but yourself, and you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about that change within yourself. Can I get an amen one more time? No matter what the problem is, no matter where the problem is, no matter whom it might concern, you have no one to change but yourself, and you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. It's only you. Only you can do this. You have nothing to do but convince yourself of the truth of that which you desire to see manifested. As soon as you succeed in convincing yourself of the reality of the state that you seek, results follow to confirm your fixed or new belief. As soon as you convince yourself of this, as soon as you feel it, as soon as you live it, walk around being that, you will see it. The results come in to confirm your new belief about yourself. Don't ever suggest to someone else the state which you desire to see him express. Instead, you convince yourself that he's already that which you desire him to be. This is a whole lesson in and of itself. we got to get into it. Again, you never suggest to somebody else the state which you desire to see him express. Instead, you convince yourself that he's already that which you desire him to be. For example, I have people in my life presently who are lost, who are so unhappy, they're just having such a hard time. And I can see it from a different vantage point and I can have many discussions with them. I can offer them resources and I do, but it's far more powerful for me to feel them in the state I wish them to be in. Instead of talk, talk, talking, offering, 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 if I spend time in the imaginal mind, my imagination having conversations with them that reflect the change in them that I wish them to experience, I am far more likely to see that manifested in their life. Let me explain. If I have a falling out with somebody and have tried to reconcile with them, but it's just not working, I can, before I fall asleep, envision myself having a conversation with this person in which we are completely restored. We are completely happy. We are talking and everything we're saying in this visualization reflects the reality that we are healed, that we've been restored, that we are happy. And as I am visualizing this, as I'm getting drowsy and I'm getting ready to go to sleep, I actually begin to feel what it would be like if we were restored, if we were back together again. I feel or I vibrate to that which I seek to manifest. And then if I can, I fall asleep with that visualization playing and the feeling, which is like the song of the inspiration. I fall asleep and the subconscious says, oh yeah, okay, I'm going to outpicture that for you. She gets to work. 
Many of us have issues with other people, but also many of us have people in our lives who are hurting, who are addicts, who are down and out, and we don't know how to help them. The best thing you can do, Neville has just told us, is go into the chamber of your imagination and see them healed there and feel it to be true. If you can do that, you can manifest it, not just for yourself, but for somebody else. And you may say, what about free will? Well, you're smart, I would say. That's a good question. What happens is, when we see our friends and family as healed, restored, well, no longer addicted, having gotten out of the chaos, and we feel this, we witness this in a feeling way, this sends a transmission of possibility to our loved ones. And here again, the subconscious knows how to do what the subconscious knows how to do. It's not up to us to worry about the mechanics of the universe. We just know and can be very sure in the reality that the universe is on the job. The universe is going to send resources to this person. The universe is going to make sure that the truth or the light or the way out is presented to this person in such a way that they can receive it. Now, they still have sovereignty, of course, and the addict might turn away. And the person in a terrible situation at home might turn away. But we keep imagining the restoration. We keep imagining the healing. And the universe keeps sending those possibilities. And often, probably more than often, at some point, that person will avail themselves of these universal possibilities. Don't stop believing and believing in being our one. Don't stop vibrating to the possibility, to the, to the new reality for this person, because that's what sends the possibility to them. Back to Goddard. Never suggest to another the state which you desire to see him express. I'm never going to say to you, I wish you would get well. I wish you'd stop thinking this way. Don't do that. Instead, convince yourself that he is already that which you desire him to be, and let the universe take care of the rest. Doesn't that feel better? Isn't it now not your responsibility? Isn't it great knowing that God knows how to do what God knows how to do and you don't have to worry about it? Just pay attention to the way you think and you feel. Realization of your wish is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You cannot fail unless you fail to convince yourself of the reality of your wish. A change of belief is confirmed by a change of expression, meaning you know you've changed the way you, f you vibrate. You know that you've changed the way that you believe when you see your life start to change. New people cycling in, new opportunities, doors opening, networking. This reflects that you are changing how you vibrate. And so every night, as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied. Feel spotless. Quote, thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. This is how you are to feel about yourself. Every night, as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied and feel spotless. For your subjective lover always forms the objective world in the image and the likeness of your conception of it. The conception defined by your feeling, your frequency. The waking two-thirds of your life on earth always corroborates or bears witness to your subconscious impressions. The actions and events of the day are effects. They are not causes. Free will is only freedom of choice. The actions and events of your day, these are the effects. They're not causes. We tend to look at the things happening outside of us and we say, this is causing me to feel this way. This is causing me to act this way. This is causing me to be this way. And what Goddard is saying, no, they are the effects. What you are impressing upon the subconscious, that's the cause. Change what you impress and you change what you experience. Quote, choose you this day whom you shall serve. Powerful, this is Joshua. And the second part of that scripture, is, he says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Choose you this day who you want to serve. But as for me and mine, we're going to serve the Lord, meaning I'm going to serve my divinity. I'm going to serve this manifestation process. I'm going to live a life of miracles. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. 
This is your freedom to choose the kind of mood you will indulge. But the expression of the mood is the secret of the subconscious. The subconscious receives impressions only through the feelings of man and, in a way known only to itself, gives these impressions form and expression. The actions of man are determined by his subconscious impressions, his illusion of free will. His belief in freedom of action is but ignorance of the causes which actually make him act. He thinks himself free because he's forgotten the link between himself and the event. Man awake is under compulsion to express his subconscious impressions. If in the past he unwisely impressed himself or in unwisely instructed the subconscious, then let him begin to change his thoughts and his feeling, for only as he does so will he change his world. Do not waste one moment on regret, for to think feelingly of the mistakes of your past is to reinfect yourself. I can dig it one more time. Don't waste even one moment on regret, and I dare say failure, and I dare say guilt, for to think feelingly, to feel that in your body, of the mistakes of your past is to reinfect yourself and therefore create more of that in the future. Quote, let the dead bury the dead. Turn from appearances and assume the feeling that would be yours were you already the one you wish to be. Turn from the appearances, meaning your 3D reality, everything in your world that tells you you are not that which you want to be. Maybe it's a person who tells you you are not what you want to be. You could never have what you want to have. You can never rise to the level of success you wish to achieve. Turn away from that, says Goddard, and assume within yourself the feeling that would be yours were you already to have your wish. Feeling a state produces the state. Feeling a state produces the state. Feeling a state produces that state. The part you play on the world stage is determined by your conception of yourself. By feeling your wish fulfilled and quietly relaxing into sleep, you cast yourself in a star role to be played on earth tomorrow and, while asleep, you are rehearsed and instructed in your part. You are the star of your tomorrow and while you're asleep, you're rehearsing for what's to come. The acceptance of the end automatically wills the means of realization. The end here is the outcome that you seek. Acceptance of this outcome, being in the energy of this outcome, automatically wills the means of the realization. It sets into motion the mechanics that bring it about in your 3D reality. Make no mistake about this, Goddard says. If, as you prepare for sleep, you do not consciously feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, then you will take with you into the chamber of her who conceived you the sum total of the reactions and feelings of your waking day. And while asleep, you'll be instructed in the manner in which they will be expressed tomorrow. You will rise believing that you're a free agent, not realizing that every action and event of the day is predetermined by your concept of yourself as you fell asleep. Your only freedom then is your freedom of reaction. You are free to choose how you feel and react to your day's drama, but the drama, the actions, the events, and the circumstances of your day have already been determined by you the night before, and the day before, and the week before. You've been creating this entire time. Unless you consciously and purposefully define the attitude of mind with which you go to sleep, you unconsciously go to sleep in the composite attitude of mind made up of all the feelings and reactions of your day. So if you're not conscious about it, he's saying, if you're not intentional, if you're not going to sleep saying to yourself, I am successful, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise, and also feeling it, then what the subconscious actually receives is the sum total of your entire day. You had road rage on the way to work. You got in a fight with your kids or your husband. You're feeling depressed about how your body looks. You don't feel very energetic. It takes the sum total of all of that, and that's what it takes into the playground or the womb of creation. And your tomorrow, that's the evidence of what you took in the night before, you see. Again, you are free to choose how you feel and react to your day's drama. But the drama itself, the actions, events, and circumstances of that day have already been determined by you. 
Unless you consciously and purposefully define the attitude of mind with which you go to sleep, you unconsciously go to sleep in the composite attitude of mind made up of all the feelings and all the reactions of your day. And every reaction makes a subconscious impression and, unless counteracted by an opposite and more dominant feeling, is the cause of future action, your tomorrow. Ideas enveloped in feeling are creative actions. Use your divine right wisely. Through your ability to think and through your ability to feel, you have dominion over all of creation. Use your divine right wisely. Don't live a reactive life. Don't allow yourself to just be tumbled over the waves of 3D reality. Get yourself together, brother. Get yourself together, sister, and start thinking and dreaming intentionally and work on that vibration so that your subconscious can receive that and create that. While you are awake, you are a gardener selecting seed for your garden. But, quote, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. End quote. Your conception of yourself as you fall asleep is the seed that you drop into the ground of the subconscious. Dropping off to sleep, feeling satisfied and happy and successful and well and prosperous, compels conditions and events to appear in your world which confirm these attitudes of mind. Sleep is the door into heaven. What you take in as a feeling, you bring out as a condition. Somebody just write that in the comments. <laughs> what you take into sleep as a feeling comes out as a condition or an action or an object in space. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Quote, as in consciousness, so on earth. End quote. And that's the end of chapter two. Do you see how important it is to be mindful and careful and intentional about what you're feeling throughout your day, of course, but also what you're feeling and how you're thinking about yourself and your world and your friends and your family right before you drop off to sleep. We spend a third of our whole life there. And it's a time and a space of pure, creative, productive possibility. How many of us, though, fall asleep pissed, didn't get enough to eat, drunk, upset, I got to go to work tomorrow, feeling that dread? feeling harried, anxious? How many of you can't even sleep because you're stressed? What's your emotional, your vibratory, and your mental state like before you fall asleep? Because it's the doorway into heaven, into the mother's chamber, where everything is created on your behalf, where the children come from, the children of your experience. All your relationships, those are your children. All the money that you have or do not have, these are your children. All of your possibilities and opportunities, these are your children. They're created by you in the womb of creation that exists only in you. Are you being intentional? That's the question. Are you thinking about this? Because you can change your whole life with a change of your belief. And your belief is your vibration. Belief and being are one. That's how you do it. That's what miracles consist of. And we all have the ability to do this. Jesus said, greater things than I do will you do. The only reason you do not see it is because you do not believe it of your own self. If you believed it, that you are already that. If you believed that you are already prosperous, so much money, more money than you need, more money than you want, if you could feel that, believe that in a feeling way, it would be yours. The only reason you don't have it is because you don't believe it. What I love about this subject is that it's an opportunity, truly, for us to see ourselves as the creators that we are. Verily I say unto you, you are a magician. You are a miracle worker. You are an avatar. You are 
powerful. You are divine. You are success. You are wellness. You are already that. And the only reason you don't see it is because you don't believe it about yourself. Well, I believe it about you. And I send the, tr the transmission of that to you. Because it's true and it's real. And the way you know it's true and real is because you feel it. Your soul bears witness to truth every time. And if you have some lady on the internet telling you, you are already that, and you feel something inside of yourself, that's your soul kicking up. That's your spirit kicking up, rising, rising to the truth of your divine nature. That's what I love about this work. It's not just about making money, people. It's not just about manifesting love. That happens. It's about the power of who you are, knowing how it works, and then setting out to change the world, which is just to change your life, to change your interior landscape. That's all it is. The power lies within you. To learn more about me, the services I offer, and also my online spiritual community, please visit me at crystalancompton.com. See you there.